In this session, I'm going to go over the chain rule with quotients. So both the examples we're going to look at are quotients, obviously. And uh, we're going to start with this one right here. Um, y equals negative 5 over 2x cubed plus 1 squared. Obviously, there's a quotient. So you ask yourself, do you need the quotient rule? Well, the answer is nope. You don't. And again, the only time you need the quotient rule is if both the numerator and denominator contain the variable. Negative 5 doesn't have a variable in it, so we don't need the quotient rule. So instead, what we're going to do is rewrite the problem as y equals negative 5 times 2x cubed plus 1 to the negative 2, and then uh, just take the derivative using the chain rule. We don't need the product rule here either because, again, that negative 5 doesn't have an x in it. So we're just going to commence with the chain rule. So we have negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. Rewrite the parentheses exactly how they are. Decrease the power by 1 takes us to negative 3. And then, as always with the chain rule, you multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared and the derivative of plus 1 is 0. So again, remember, you can't distribute through parentheses raised to a power, but we can multiply the negative 10 by the, or sorry, the positive 10 by the 6x squared. So that's going to give us 60x squared. And then we move this, because it has a negative exponent, down to the bottom and make the exponent positive. So we have 60x squared over the quantity 2x cubed plus 1 cubed. And that would be the final answer for that one. So that one's pretty easy. Um, for the second one, y equals 3x squared minus x over the quantity 2x minus 1 to the fifth. Again, we ask ourselves, do we need the quotient rule? Well, the answer on this one is definitely yes, we do, because both the numerator and the denominator have the variable in it. So now we're gonna, now that we know we have to use the quotient rule, then we need to know our high and our low so that we can find our d high and our d low. So here's our high, here's our low. Remember, we always want to actually write low first because that reminds us that when we use the quotient rule, it starts with low. So you, you write low first to remember that you're going to start with low in your quotient rule. So the low is 2x minus 1 to the fifth, d low is its derivative, so that requires chain rule, five times, 2x minus one to the fourth, times the derivative of the inside is two, so d low is gonna be 10 times 2x minus one to the fourth. Then we move to our high, high is three x squared minus x, and d high, is 6x minus 1. So then remember for quotient rule, you have low d high minus high d low over low squared. So let's write our y prime. So we've got low times d high. minus, for the quotient rule, high, and make sure you put all these in parentheses if they have more than one term. So high times d low, and then put the entire thing over low squared. Well, that needs to be simplified. So when you have a power raised to another power, remember you multiply the powers. So what we're really going to have is 2x minus 1 to the 10th power. So let's go ahead and put that in. 2x minus 1 to the 10th power. So 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, now if we look at this, you can see that we have three distinct terms. We have two terms in the top, there's one, and there's one, and then we have one term in the bottom. So what you want to look at is, is there a common factor in all three of those terms? And obviously, all three of the terms contain 2x minus 1, 
and the smallest exponent is 4. So we get to cross out 2x minus 1 to the fourth from each term. So you can do it directly here, just cross them out, or if you're more comfortable, which a lot of people are, you can just factor out the 2x minus 1 to the fourth. So that would leave 2x minus 1 to the first times 6x minus 1, and then minus you do have this 10, so let's write the 10 in front just because it's easier to do that. 3x squared minus x. We got rid of all four of those 2x minus 1, so those are completely gone. And then over the 2x minus 1 to the 10th, and then what you have to remember to do at this point is to cancel out the 2x minus 1 to the 4. We can cancel four of those out, and that's going to leave six of them on the bottom. Then what you need to do is foil this together, distribute the minus 10 through that set of parentheses, and simplify your answer. So let's see what we get. We have y prime equals, if we foil this, first give us 12x squared, outers are minus 2x, inners are minus 6x, so that's negative 2x minus 6x is negative 8x, and then plus 1. Distribute your minus 10, you get negative 30x squared, then plus 10x, and that's all over 2x minus 1 to the 6th, because remember, we canceled 4 of those out, so 10 minus 4 left us with 6 on the bottom. And then we look for any common or like terms, so we have 12x squared minus 30x squared, those are like terms. Then we also have negative 8x plus 10x, those are like terms. So when we combine our like terms, 12 minus 30 is negative 18x squared, minus 8x plus 10x is plus 2x, and then we have that plus 1 over 2x minus 1 to the 6th. So that would be the final answer. Now the only final comment I want to make is this, some people instead of pulling out the 2x minus 1 to the 4th and then canceling it from the outside, prefer just when they see it this way, in this original form from your quotient rule, to cancel out the 2x minus 1 to the 4th there. And that is totally okay. If you're one of those people, that's totally fine. So if we decided I'm taking 2x minus 1 to the 4th out, just make sure you take 4 of them out there, 4 of them out there leaves 1, four of them out there leave six, and then that way you can see what you're left with is 2x minus one times 6x minus one, same thing as we got there. 3x squared minus x times 10, same thing we got there, and then you have 2x minus one to the sixth on the bottom, same thing we got there. So either way is totally fine. And that's it for this session.